All right, so we got another article it's from Collider. This is a movie that uh, is not taught, if not not all the time, or really very, very rarely. And this is the best Dracula actor isn't Bela Lugosi or even Christopher Lee. It's uh, gives you like the three little bullets down there, and immediately you've hard, you'd be hard pressed to find a Count Dracula that was as seductive or memorable as Bela Lugosi's, or even as masterful evil and presence as Christopher Lee's. Both Lee and Lugosi are considered Dracula icons these days, and for a good reason. But if you are looking for a slightly different take on literature's most famous vampire, may we suggest Richard Roxbury's performance as the Count in the criminally underrated Van Helsing. And he is... There's been many guys that have played uh, Dracula over the years. You know, they just named, you know, Bela Lugosi, who... Uh, was in the 1931 Dracula. He, I think he was he was actually the first one to play Dracula. Chris Lee has played Dracula. I've not seen his performance. Um, I do know uh, Gerard Butler played Dracula in uh, Dracula 2000. Um, but, you know, and then I think was it, was it Gary Oldman that played him in Bram Stoker's Dracula. I'm not really sure. I have not really seen that movie at all either. I mean, I know I miss people probably thinking, wait, Mike, Oracle, what are you thinking? You know, I mean... Uh, you haven't seen Bram Stoker's Dracula, but, uh, you know, uh, Richard Roxbury's, to me, I really, really enjoy. So let's, let's read more of the article. Though the film itself hasn't always been the most well-received, it features one of Roxbury's most entertaining performances and certainly his best in a villainous role. Not only is his Dracula one of the most powerful ever but on screen, but he's also one of the most relentless. He's a he's a good he was a good Dracula. I really liked his performance. This Hugh Jackman led to the Universal Monsters may have come out twenty years ago. Man, it's been that long. Wow, it came out in two thousand four. But Roxbury's dramatic, almost Shakespearean take on horror's greatest vampire is so over the top that it begs to be remembered. His dramatic. Kenneth's and if he's playing the role for the stage rather than the screen, he feels just right. For this often over-the-top take on Hollywood's most famous monsters, and yet the presence of the screen commands our full attention. The way Roxbury's Count Dracula exludes both fear and vulnerability, often in the same lifeless breath, makes us almost sympathetic for this devil. Of course, he's still Dracula, so those sympathies only go so far. Yet there's a skin-deep desire for connection that encourages him to pursue even his sworn enemies as closer companions. The truth is, Van Helsing's Dracula lore is already fascinating on its own. Here it's implied that Van Helsing Jackman himself killed Dracula in life, only for him to make a literally little deal with the devil and death. Their shared centuries long history is still a bit of a mystery and likely always will be unless we get some sort of legacy sequel. Please, Universal. It says in parentheses. There could have been a sequel to this. I don't know why they didn't do it. I don't, you know, to be really honest, you know, I don't know if they really needed a sequel to it. But it would have been interesting to see one. But that doesn't keep us from connecting thoroughly with this take on the character. In fact, aside from Van Helsing's interesting mythology, Roxbury's performance really hits the whole thing home. He's carefully and com convening, wasting no opportunity to make his role over the dark parts, dark parts of Europe complete. The swashbuckling gravitas he gives the vampire count is undeniable and his Flair for the dramatic sets him apart from some of the more un understated and stoic versions of Bram Stoker's infamous creature. 
He definitely, I mean, he definitely embodied the character really good. Uh, they go on, I'm not going to read the whole entire article, but they, it's a long article, but they go on that, uh, we deserved more of Richard Ruffer's Count Dracula. I mean, he, he was, I mean, the, the movie, I think, I know the movie was two hours and maybe two hours and 11 minutes. I mean, that's a good, good two hours and 11 minutes with Richard Roxbury as Dracula. You know, I've never even heard of the actor, you know, until this movie came out back in 2004. And I know one of the, one of his, one of the Dracula's brides, uh, she was, she's the one with the long black hair. Uh, he actually married her in real life. So, uh, you know, that's pretty cool. I think they're still married. Um, Dracula isn't necessarily an easy character to play. There are so many facts, facets of the motives and complex incarnations of the history that every new version of the character is on some level bogged down by the past. This particularly in case following Bella Gossi's forms as the character, a distinct portrayal that far too many try to emulate. While Van Helsing was meant to be a way to honor the Universal Monsters franchise in a distinctly action adventure format, not like Stephen Summers' previous success with The Mummy, Roxbury wisely resists the urge to imitate Lugosi, though he, like the 1930s Dracula star, likewise plays the Count a bit over the top. His performance is unique to his Literation of the character, it feels authentic within the low fantasy world like it belongs. This is the magic of Roxbury's Dracula. It's a shame that Van Helsing never got a sequel, though because despite the spectacular monster hunter slaying Count Dracula, there were, was always the possibility that Roxbury could return for a sequel, either via flashbacks or in the main narrative. Director Stephen Summers had a history of the, his already having brought Arnold Bonsall's deceased anthologist Impop to Impop back from The Mummy Returns. So it stands to reason that we could have seen Ross Ray's Dracula again. But it's a mode point. Either way, we're afraid as the Van Helsing franchise was dead in the water before it even had a chance for a spin-off television. Even still, if there's one underrated direct performance we're re revisiting this All Hallows Eve, it's Richard Roxbury's take on the vampire. He definitely, he definitely did a great job. Uh, I wish he was given more credit. Um, I like the look of him in the film. I liked how he, I liked how Richard portrayed Dracula. It's a lot of fun. I mean, this whole entire film was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't think they really needed a sequel to it. Uh, you know, what other characters could they have introduced? Because the Valerias, all the Valerias are all gone. You know, that, that includes, uh, um, Kay Beckinsale's, uh, character in the film. When she, uh, was basically, she died of a heart, a heart attack in that film. Uh, but, uh. Yeah, it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they would have did a, se if they would have did a sequel to it. But I love the movie for what it is. It is definitely my favorite because it, it, it pays tribute to the Universal Monsters, which if it wasn't for those, we probably wouldn't have, you know, Michael or Jason or, you know, Freddy or so-and-so, stuff like that. Because these characters that are portrayed in the film, you know, Frankenstein's monster, the Wolfman, you got... Dracula, that was the stuff back in the 1930s and stuff like that. Just very, very cool stuff. And I, and my favorite Universal Monster film is Frankenstein 1931, Brawl's Call Off. So I, I really love that. I love, I love its sequel, uh, The Bride of Frankenstein as well. I mean, it's, you know, very, very well done for, you know, the time that it was in, you know, in the 30s. But uh, yeah, Richard Roxbury definitely is right up there. Like I said, I don't know much about him. I, uh, this was, you know, when I saw this in theater back in 2004, it was fun. It was amazing. It was, it, it, it was, it drew a crowd, you know, we had, you know, people, you know, there, pretty much people of all ages because it was, I believe it was right. It was right PG-13. It wasn't rated R. 
So uh, it was just uh, fun from start to finish. And uh, I remember going into it and, you know, who's playing Dracula? Richard Roxbury. I've never heard of Richard Roxbury. And I did see him in one other movie a couple years after this. It was actually on, it was actually on TV. I think it was on like satellite or something. Uh, it was a, I want to say it was a Jackie Chan film. Uh, mid, uh, mid to late uh, 90s, I believe. I can't remember what the name of the film is, but uh, he, he played uh, a villain in that too, if I remember. Very, very good as a villain role. I mean, but, you know, Dracula to me was his favorite, is my favorite uh, performance of his. You know, I've, like I said, I've not seen much of Richard Roxbury's uh, films, but uh, he is definitely, uh, you know, people might think it's crazy, but he is definitely my favorite Dracula, for sure. Uh, but with further ado, that is it, guys. Just wanted to share that article because you don't see much stuff written about, you know, the 2004 film Van Helsing, which stars Hugh Jackman and Kate Beckinsale. But uh, this is it. Oracle's out of here, and take care.